let's continue on. Going to get some sanding done here. Get ready to get this thing uh, inside to get sprayed out. And we'll check it out. You guys that didn't see the roof video, uh, you might want to go check that one out if you haven't watched that one yet. I paint the roof separate and I'm going to paint the sides because it's just too much. Too much going on at the same time. It's a lot easier to do the roof separate. So, just too much for one guy who's old to do this shit. Young guys can do that, but not me. Let's get this thing ready. All I gotta do is mask this off. And then I gotta go through and just double check. I think there was a couple errors and maybe I maybe when I tack cloth it, I'll just check it. I think I got everything sanded. I'll cover up the wheels. Show it inside, hose it down. And I gotta cover this, take this off. I just want it there so I can blow it off once and then I'll take it off and paint it. I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about this thing real quick. Uh, if you guys are interested in it, I know there's a lot of people that are going to watch this and go, man, I want one of those or whatever. There's, there's good and there's bad to them. Uh, if you get a really good one, they're, this one here is kind of semi-good. Um, the, the material it's made out of is like what they make uh, sails for sailboats. Um, that's what it's made out of. It's, I don't know what they call it. They have a name for it. Some of them, I, I think, are made out of actual that rubberized stuff, you know, like the jumpies are. But this one's made out of sails, and the one that's made out of sails is lighter weight. So if you're looking for one that's lighter weight, that's plus there. Um, the thing, uh, some things that I don't like about this one is uh, the fact that the zipper, if you can see here, the zipper goes down and over and around and up, okay? So if you have something in there and it's wet, you want to pull it out, um, it's not very fun. You have to either, what I'm going to use is spring clamps. I'll just spring clamp it in place. Uh, I'll show you guys that in a minute. Just roll it up and put these on there. You get these in Harbor Freight Tools. So once it's aired up, it's pretty sturdy. Um, what I do, you can put tie downs on the outside of it, but I just get heavy buckets of, and put them at the corners so that the corners don't do this. If they do this, it'll collapse. But in the wind, it could blow pretty good, and this thing will just sway a little bit, but it won't blow down if you have, you know, like I got a gas can over there, and diesel can over here. Now some of them have, Right here on these things, this is a vent, and this one's kind of poorly made because it doesn't have the double screen. Well, I can see. Maybe it does, and I just can't see it. Let me look at it again. Well, Mini, it does have it, but they're really poorly made. Look at the size, um, which is fine, you know, depending on what you're trying to do. Uh, like. 
if you don't want to get paint all over something and you just want to protect that it works fine even with the door open like that if the doors open uh, overspray will kind of just slowly go out of it so because what happens is there's tons of little tiny leaks everywhere you know in the stitching and everything and it blows air inside of here and pressurizes this and then all the air goes out somewhere so it goes out there or it goes out those holes and it doesn't seem to get a lot of overspray on it because of that pressurized booths don't get oversprayed that much but over time it's going to get you know covered and stuff who knows i don't know so what i do is i protect the ground with these drop cloths but i'm not only protecting the ground with that i'm actually protecting the tires from wearing on the cloth because if you if you wear a hole in this cloth in the sail cloth um, you're gonna have to stitch it up because uh, if it leaks it's really hard to air it up uh, you have to have both doors shut when you air it up because what happens it has to get air in the center of it so it will it'll open so it's kind of hard to un understand that unless you know like if you leave it overnight and you have your cans you know in the corners and it's all stretched out then it it'll open without doing that you can even have the doors open if you want but it's cool where it's not so noisy so another thing that's not so great but it's also a benefit sometimes if you're in a cold area is um the sun goes through it it goes in through it but it doesn't come back out kind of like having your windows shut on your car and you know and going into your car so it's extremely hot inside like right now it's only about 70 outside and it's about 90 something inside there right now so you know you got to make sure you have material that is slower drying make sure you add you know you slow thinner and things like that if it's in the summer, you know, you're going to have a little bit of difficulty, you know. I don't usually have that problem, but I'm just saying. So, um, you got to think about that. Make sure you have, when you order your material, you get the, you know, the slower hardener. Like spraying a silver car in here might be kind of tough. Because, uh, you know, on the base coat, yeah, it's really hard to get it to dry fat slow enough when it's hot like that, so... And even early in the morning, like I said, right now, it's only 70 outside. And it's probably 90 in there, so it's pretty hot. Um, so, is it great for, like, a shop? You know, one of the other things is, you know, I'll tell you too, is the zippers on some of these. And you can't, once you buy it, you can't return it, okay? So, you get what you get. If you're not happy with it, you keep it because it's going to cost so much to ship it back. It's not going to be worth it. Um... The zippers on this one are poor quality, but the cool thing is they put like four zippers on each one. So if it zips and then it starts to unzip on its own, you can take one of the other zippers and move it around and usually you can get it to work. Um, so, but if you're driving over that all the time, cause you have to drive over it, um, that's going to wear out, you know, over time. If you're going to use it professionally all the time, it might not be, you know, it might be okay. It might be suitable, but you're just trying to tell you what you're going to get if you get one. What kind of things you'll run into um there are like i said there's better ones there's ones that are ten thousand dollars this one was like fifteen hundred dollars on amazon so and amazon did not have returns on this because they just it was just a contract thing they had with them so uh and it came straight from china you know and that's where they all come from that i know of there's a couple there's a there is a u.s made one and it's like 10 grand so if it's worth it do you spend 10 grand then you know maybe buy that one but to me it's just not worth that you know but it's 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 really cool like let's say you're doing a restoration shop or something like that maybe you're only painting one car a month you know to have a spray booth and you know all that stuff um and you don't want to get over spray at all in your shop and stuff like that this might be a good alternative for somebody like that um if you were a professional shop where all you're doing is just spot repairs absolutely this would be like a waste of money I think I'd just go buy a really a really nice booth, downdraft or something like that. But it'd be great for you know guy DIY guy doing you know or something like that. But you know it is fifteen hundred dollars, so but it keeps over. Right. So some of the benefits of it is uh, you can see in here really good. Um, 
even some spray booths you get it with shadow spots in the spray booth because there isn't some of the older ones had poor lighting you know and stuff like that you can see really really good in here there's like light everywhere so that's a huge plus so if you're versus painting in your garage or something like that where you can't see you can see in here uh, in one of these you can also turn your pressure up and it has enough flow just a little bit it's not that not as much as like a regular spray booth but it has enough airflow even with the door open like I was saying even if you didn't use the filters um, there's enough airflow in there so if you shut the door and then you use the and you had the filters opened up but like I said this one here the little plastic guards covers they don't have anything to you know there's no little velcro strip to keep them open so you have to use like a spring and roll it up and use a spring clamp or something like that to hold them up so it's kind of hokey as far as that goes I mean for me it's fine you know but you know would I buy it again I would probably look at one with the door that opened to the side or you know had like a zipper in the middle and then something different I might you know I don't know something there's got to be a better way to make that um, it's it's actually not a real big deal because you could just like I said roll it up use spring clamps and hold it um, you know uh, I, I guess I would buy this one again if I if it was a lot cheaper than the other ones and I was let's say you were doing like say two cars even a month then you know this might be a great thing to have I'm sure over time you probably wouldn't wear out the zippers it would it would take a couple of years and if you got two years out of a $1,500 item for you know you're making money with you know that's really not too bad so it's actually you know if you had a shop inside you could put lights inside you could put lights on the outside of this and then that would work some of them actually have little places for lights inside I don't know how good the lighting would be with that you know I saw these like little hanging LEDs I don't think they'd be bright enough um, but you could just put a whole bunch of lights on the outside and then it would illuminate it would act as a, dif a, a, a diffuser like the outside of it would kind of illuminate all that and then it would kind of probably put some really nice light in there you could see pretty good so just ideas if you were thinking about it um, or you just looked at this video and thought wow what's, what the heck is that um, that might help you um, decide what to find you know it's not a fix all it doesn't you know you know you're not going to get no dust in it because it's got this you're still going to have issues with bugs I mean, back years ago guys used to take black flag you know add it to the paint <laughs> the old school outside painters I'd never do that because I'm sure that's got to be really bad for you worse than the paint itself you'd probably still get some of that through your respirator but um you know you could probably spray the outside with bug spray if you wanted to maybe that would help little ideas I don't know I, I still wouldn't do it because I don't want to breathe that crap so it's it's already when I when I have a when I have a, a respirator on inside here I smell no paint nothing there's uh it's very very because there's you know it does have a good ventilation it does move enough you know so and, and after but the, the, the only you do still get some ability for overspray to land back on your paint so you definitely want to work like if you're using a, a regular you know I don't know what they're called through draft spray booth where it's going through um, versus downdraft which I think is better but the through draft ones, there's benefits to both, you know. The through draft one you usually will start, let's say the draft is going this direction, you'll start on that side on your final coat and then you'll work your way this way so that your overspray doesn't land on the car. And you might have a little bit of issue with that. I didn't, but um, because I was using a really slow hardener, so. And I was spraying, it was 100 and something, I don't know, it was probably 110 when I sprayed in there. Um, so you gotta have a good clear. You can have a crappy clear that doesn't, you know, flow out, have a slow flash time. And, I mean, the flash time has got you just right with the Tamco. So, anyway, a couple ideas. Talk to you in the next part.
So how hot do you guys think it is? It was 120 inside there. So here we, here we ended up with this thing painted. Um, so hot out right now. So it was a little tough to paint this out there. But anyway, not a big deal. Can be buffed from here. We're going to color sand above it. So I'm not as worried about it being perfect, of course. That's always the issue. You know, when you're painting somewhere different than a booth, regular booth. Um, so there's a couple flaws in there. I got a couple runs. Of course, you know, it, the problem with spraying that thing also is that you're a little bit too close. You need about another foot back so you can kind of step back and look at things. Because I had to kind of step at a side like this to look. And, you know, that kind of works, but... It's a little bit harder to do, and I was a little bit snow blind from it being white. You know, that's always an issue in too much light, which was probably the problem that I was having out there. So it's really hard to see whether it was flowing on correctly or not. So, of course, there's some flaws in it, but not a big deal. It's normal every time flaws that you get, and it'll be really easy to color sand and buff it from here. You know, a little bit of orange peel in some places, a couple of runs. I hate to get that much orange peel and stuff. I'd rather have it be pretty smooth. It was a little bit more orange peel than I usually get. So it's just all, you know, when it's a vertical panel, it's, you're always on the edge. You know, when you're painting something that's a little bit round, it's a lot easier to paint or flat surfaces or the new cards are all kind of round. To me, they're just way easier to paint. Every time I paint one, like my, you know, anything from the 90s on up, my daughter's car, you know, I painted that thing, no runs, you know, no orange peel. That's, you know, I, I've even used like the wrong spray gun with that. But with this, you got to use the, you know, uh, using the Technopro light, you know, is a, is a big must on, you know, a VW bus. And if you don't have a really good gun, you're going to probably get such a heavy orange peel in it that you're going to have trouble getting it being smooth enough to actually buff out and get the orange peel to go away so this one I, I shouldn't have any problem with but it's again like I said it's not as smooth as some of the other ones I've done but it's just the way it is I mean typically when you paint you know you, sometimes you have good days you have bad days you have you know whatever the weather brings on to you and personally as well so I've been painting for years and years and I never unless I'm doing it every day I'm never really consistent. If I was doing this every day, I'd get really consistent on it. It'd be the same every time. So the bodywork looks pretty good. There's not much, you know, even these doors, these are pretty wavy. There's not much going on. There's a little bit. I mean, yeah, there's waves in it, but a lot of this is shadows we're looking at right inside here. We'll get outside in the light and look at it in a little bit, but it's just too hot. We're going to actually, we got it in here to cool it off because we got air conditioning in the garage and uh, we're going to, Cool it off, and then we'll, I don't know if we'll get on the color sanding it before then, but get the bus all cooled off. We're going to start assembling. We'll put the doors on, and uh, kind of got to get it all put together, and maybe I'll let you guys take a look at that when we get it all done. But it turned out okay. You know, it looks good. I mean, it's a pretty straight-looking van. I mean, it looks really, really clean, and it looks neat with those white wheels and the hubcaps. You know, when it's got the, our windows came in today, we got those. Thank you, YouTube subscriber. I don't know your subscriber name, but we did find uh, two different subscribers that um, found us and had windows. One guy had a full set, so those just got here. Um, another guy, thank you very much, had two of them. And so I was looking, I was going to buy them from him. And then he, then I found a guy with the full set from another person from subscriber that re referred me to a Samba ad. And the a guy who... We got him from the Samba from, was actually a subscriber too. Now look at this fat dry spot right there. Huh. That's probably a second coat miss. Yeah, it was really hard. That's why I like to do the window section separate. So I tell you guys, if you, you know, when I'm doing this whole thing from ground up to here, it's really easy to get misses because you get lost going around those windows. You forget where you were, you know. On a newer car, like I said, everything's so, you know, you don't have to worry about angles like a hard angle like that much, except for on the rubber on the front bumpers. 
but those are so small when they're off the car it's not that hard to remember where you were where on this it's a lot harder to do to remember where you are you know because you're long panels and you, I'm too close to it where I couldn't walk back and forth you know I had to kind of spray panel spray which some guy says that you shouldn't spray to the panels I've been doing that my whole life he says something about a mark you get from that never seen one in my life so whatever that is I don't know but I think it's because I was watching him spray and he sprays like this it's like dude the overspray is just gonna land on there and when if you're doing that into a panel with your gun angles there, you should always have your gun going straight at the panel like this. Not like this, not like that. Straight at it, no whipping. The whips, that stuff lands on the other surface and you know can dry up before you get a chance to paint over it. And it'll cause you know shadowing and stuff like that issues. So some guys do it and they get away with it. But they wonder why they get weird things and I don't get any of those things because of that. But I mean I get other things. We all get stuff. Anyway, I was like, you guys are the next So we got these came in today. Thank you very much again. Uh, I don't know his username, but one of the guys, maybe he'll comment and give him a thumbs up if he said he's the one uh, that brought these over or, you know, put them on the Samba. And then thank you very much for the other guy that referred me to the ad. You know, I saw him. And then uh, thank you very much for the other guy that offered the windows that he had in Arizona. They looked like really nice windows. Um, I wouldn't have mind had them, but he only had two, and I was kind of like, well, this guy had all five of them, and I, I think a couple of the glass are broken on these, and I have that extra window. I'll just swap out some glass, and then, wow, I'll have a whole set. So, and just take care of the problem, and if the price was in, kind of in my budget, a little bit more than I want to pay, but still within that area. So, let's take a look at what's in here. I'm going to open them up, take a look. We haven't opened them, we just cracked them open. Yeah, they look, wow, he really packed them. I mean, really good. Some of the good stuff. It was kind of expensive to ship, but you know what? I think these would be expensive to ship no matter what you did. Wow, really. But it looks like he took them to the place and just handed them to him and had them Oh, jeez. Look at that. Those look like they've either been replaced, and I think they're, yeah, they have. I think they're in the glass. That's cool. So this, these things look in pretty good shape. I think we can take the screws out and put stainless screws in there. Yeah, we can take that out. We'll probably take the, the screws out, put stainless steel screws in, and then polish them. And that'll really make them look nice because then they won't have that little ugliness around there. And we have stainless rivets too. We might do that. I hope you guys can see that. Pretty nice window. These are pretty nice. Yeah, the ones in Arizona were really nice too. And they had the uh, wood grain things on them. And I can make those, so not a big deal. We don't, we don't always need original stuff. Uh, Yeah, there was one that had some broken glass in there, he said, I know, but some of the glass just fell out or broke. It was a tough journey all the way from North Carolina. Yeah, they done packing this. Yeah, oh yeah, they, this was done at the UPS store or something. Got the screen on too. Shipping is like kind, of, kind of got expensive on these days. It's like, well, yeah, that one's got the screen. Wow, that's cool. We can actually use that screen as a pattern to make a few more, too. Or just not put screens on. I don't know. We can make it. Probably make some. A little bit of standard screen material. Spring molding is probably similar to the standard, you know. We've got a screen and a loose glass. Careful with this one. Let's see if you can see. Did you guys see that one? And this one here. So look at the glass, the, the shape, the glass. Usually a lot of times the problem is 
is there's bubbling along the edge of the glass. So these ones don't have much of that. You can see the glass looks pretty good shape. So we can probably clean these up. These will look like brand new when we're mm -hmm. done with them. Wow, really good. Really good. And it's really expensive to buy the glass. So you want me to open the rest of them up real quick and then we'll let you guys take a look so you don't have to wait for us to unwrap them. Bring it over. Let's take a look. This one looks really good too, again. You guys can see this one, that's not too bad. It's on the inside over here, it's got a little bit of work we gotta do. We're gonna have to do something. Some body work on the inside. Yeah. Not too much. It's a little bent. Oh, we gotta be careful, the glass might fall out. Okay. They look pretty nice. They're almost complete. You know, missing the, there's a little piece on the inside. The ones in Arizona that I had had all of the parts, which would have been kind of cool, but I just thought, well, like I said, more than it's a little harder to find one or two at a time if I could get all of them. It'd be easier. So the only reason. There you go. Cool. Now I know what the rubber looks like. And I can't believe they charge thirty dollars for that. It's crazy. They have something very similar at the poultry supply that I can grab. It's like probably cost me two dollars a window. Use that, even though it's black. We might have a gray one. You never know. May not have that little lip like that though. See how that is? Might be able to get it. Something close to that. What's got to do is just keep it from uh, leaking. Chris was taking them apart, and there's all the knobs. Just so you guys didn't get think uh, he didn't give them to us. They're in there. All right, guys, check it with the door on. This is this side. This is the other side. Look at this side here. We haven't we haven't got it lined up yet, but you can just see that big whiteness with those wheels. I think it looks cool. But you see the camper windows in, all polished, and then the white logo on the front, the white bumpers. There you go. So it has the standard wave right here. <laughs> a lot of people don't realize, but that's always there. Normally, guys go and they fill it in with filler. And what it is, it's because where this part is attached right here, or this part right here is attached. Out here, there's a support that goes out. And there's always, it always they always get a little wave right there, if you can see it. It's, it's like, it's a factory one. There's not much else. I mean, there's there's enough waves in it, but once it's color sanded and buffed, this thing's gonna look a whole, totally different. When I get done color sanding and buffing it, this one here, uh, we gotta make up for a little bit on the color sand, because the spray finish didn't quite come out as good as some. Uh, so it, you know, it's the way it is. Sometimes it come out really good spray, and then I gotta do less color sand and buff work. Sometimes I'll get it really nice color sanding, you know, it just all depends. It's kind of a crapshoot. Just roll your dice. Weather, you know, has a bunch, a lot to do with it. It's so hot like that, it's hard for me to physically, you know, I I get fatigue and then I forget where I am and stuff like that. You know, like when I'm trying, that's why I like to not do these windows at the same time I do down here because I'll get lost. I'll forget where I'm at and then I go, oh, where did I stop at? Was it at this pillar or that pillar? You know, you forget. Especially when you get older, it happens a lot. So, Kind of the way it goes. If I, I don't know if I showed you guys, but um, if you look here, those lines look pretty good, and these doors look fairly straight. I mean, there are some waves in them again. And that quarter, remember that was gone. This is all replaced. I haven't got the rubber in here yet, so that'll kind of push things around a little bit um, once we get that in. But once I get to the, like I said, once it's color sanded buffed, it's going to look totally different. You guys are going to be going wow it'll look really good so not much in there a little bit of shadows in here right now I move around uh, should look good outside okay we're putting on this rubber um the original rubber was um if I can put this on a wider format there's that better for you guys 
So the original rubber was, um, looked kind of like this right here, okay? It looked kind of like it was just flat squares, what I remember on my bus, and I don't know, it says the same. But the new stuff from West Coast Metrics comes, it's like this. It shows this portion to go up, but it just looked weird to have that part. And it doesn't, I mean, that's not going to seal against the door. It just doesn't make any sense. So we're just going to put it in like this. Is that upside down? I don't know. I don't know. We're just putting it in that way. With the squares. Just with a square like that. So that's all in there. All right. We got that all in. And a lot of this stuff you have to trim because uh, it's they're too big. And if you have them sticking out too far, the door won't shut. So it's a pain in the butt. It's, trimming this rubber is always, I hate doing it. It's just, it doesn't just install. So anyway. All right, let's give this thing one more look with the new camera. See if it looks any better to you guys. So we have our wide angle lens now, so it's kind of cool. We can, I can be up closer and still get like the whole van or I could never get this whole van in here. So, um, like I said, the color sanded buff is going to do a little bit more of the work this time. Well, like I said, sometimes it's funny how many cars I've shot where I got like no orange peel, you know, like my daughter's nineties Honda, you know, my other daughter's other car I, I just laid it down perfect because it's you're not spraying a vertical flat panel and you're not spraying around all these type of windows and trying to get all the angles and i still get like dry spots and things like that in there so you know i i don't usually get that stuff but i, I was just snow blind so it was kind of snow blind out there i couldn't even see it i was walking around afterwards looking for flaws and I didn't even see him then out there, but I pulled in here and I could go, whoa, what happened? Where'd that come from? So anyway, different lighting and uh, different, you know, different things that come into play. So anyway, let's hope the sound comes out good on this phone. That's one thing I couldn't really tell. Um, like I said, there's a lot of stuff. I'm going to some dry spots. I'll just color sand buff it. Really won't take that long to do. And I was planning on doing that anyway. So I just like to do it without getting too much because it's a lot easier. So anyway, uh, that's it for this, uh, the paint. And uh, come back for the color center buff because we're going to do a video on, uh, I'll do like a clip on me doing how, how I do it with a DA. And uh, I can get it, you know, and some people will get chasers in it by using a DA. And I don't and because of certain things I use. And it might be good to learn from. And as well, I'm going to have the whole hyperlapse of doing it. Um, and hopefully it'll turn out right. And uh, the one thing I can't get is I can't do a hyperlapse uh, close-up. Or a, what is this called? Uh, wide angle. I don't think it does that. But at least you can see what I'm doing. And I'll kind of move the camera around with me. And get it close enough to where you guys can kind of see how it's how it works and then uh, i'll do some talking a little bit along the way so you guys see how i do it maybe it'll help you learn how to do your own anyway uh i'll talk to you guys in the next video please like share and subscribe and uh, we'll watch the rest of this stuff and while i'm doing that we'll be putting in more of the inside get that all done and uh, we'll see how it works talk to you in the next one